वेलकम आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस कोर्स संधि इन पाणिनियन ग्रामर सो फार वी हैव स्टडीड द प्रोसेस ऑफ स्पीच प्रोडक्शन इन विच द कॉग्नेटिव एज वेल एज द फिजिकल प्रोसेसिस वेर डिस्क्राइब्ड इन ऑर्डर टू अंडरस्टैंड द द कॉग्नेटिव प्रोसेस विच इज बिहाइंड द एक्चुअल ऑडिबल स्पीच ऑफ विच संधि इज अ पार्ट वी डेल्वड डीप इन टू दिस पर्टिक्युलर प्रोसेस and we studied the process of speech production in this lecture we shall study the features of the speech thus produced the speech which is audible we studied this particular source paniniya shiksha and the verses namely atma buddhya samityarthan mano yungte vivakshaya मन कायाग्नि स प्रेरयति मारुत मारुतस्तूरसी चरन मंद्र जनयति स्वर सुदीर्णो मूर्ध्य विहतो पक्त्रपद्य मारुत वर्णाजनयते एंड वी स्टडीड दीज वर्सेस क्लोजली एंड फाउंड दैट देर आर एट स्टेजेस विच आर जनरेटेड विच आर स्टेटेड in these verses and these eight stages are the first one is atma buddhya samityarthan the second one is mano yungte vivakshaya the third one is manah kayagni mahanti the fourth one is saprerayati marutam the fifth one is marutas tu rasi charan mandram janayati swaram the sixth one is sudirno murdhya pihato the seventh one is vaktrama padya marutah and the eighth one is varnanjanayate amongst these the first two we saw describe the cognitive stage which can be called as the program of the language and the remaining ones they are the physical ones and we also showed this in the form of a diagrammatic representation in the previous lecture now in this lecture we shall study the features of the sounds thus produced in order to study the features of the sounds thus produced we also need to study one more important concept namely an important means most important means in the oral cavity which is jivha which is the tongue जिह्वा तो करण स्मृत सो जिह्वा इज कंसिडर्ड एज करण एंड करण मीन्स द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टंट मीन्स द मीन्स विच वेन ऑपरेशनलाइज ब्रिंग्स अबाउट द रिजल्ट ऑफ द एक्शन दैट इज हाउ करण इज डिफाइंड सो जिह्वा इज दैट करण सो दैट इज द रीजन वाई जिह्वा इज कंसिडर्ड द मोस्ट इफेक्टिव और important instrument as far as the process of speech production so tongue plays an important role in shaping the wind flow in the oral cavity by directing itself towards places of articulation within the oral cavity the tongue also touches places of articulation in oral cavity to produce certain sounds and this is why jivha is considered to be the most important means for the process of speech production which is present in the oral cavity the sounds that are produced by this particular process can be summarized in this particular fashion on the left hand side you have artha which is part of the arthakasha on the right hand side you have shabdas which are part of the shabdakasha and it is these shabdas which get transferred 
and transformed and converted in the form of the audible speech. So if the earth is Ram goes to a forest in the form of a sentence meaning, then this sentence meaning in the Arthakasha gets converted into the sentence Ramo Vanam Gachati, which is part of the Shabdakasha. And then the subsequent process happens and this entire program of the sentence gets expressed through the speech signals containing all these sounds Ramo Vanam Gachati. Then we have the second sentence meaning there he does penance and this sentence meaning is expressed by this sentence in the Shabdakasha Vane Saha Tapah Karoti and then this gets produced by the subsequent process of the speech production and these sounds they are produced. So this Shabda in the Shabdakasha takes the form of the audible speech mentioned over here, Vane Saha Tapah Karoti. This is that audible speech that is produced. Then in the sequence we have the sentence meaning, then he slays Vali. This sentence meaning corresponds to the Shabdakasha part namely Tataha Saha Valinam Hanti. This is that sentence. And this sentence which is part of the Shabdakasha then gets transformed into the audible speech signals in the form of tataha saha valinam hanti in this sequence, in this manner. Similarly, then we have then he slays Ravana as the meaning which then gets transformed in the Shabdakasha as tataha saha ravanam hanti which following the subsequent process gets transformed in the sounds tataha, saha, ravanam and hanti. Similarly, the last meaning in the sequence is then he comes back and this meaning in the arthakasha gets transformed in the shabdakasha in the form of tataha, saha, pratyagachati which then gets converted into the form of the speech signals namely tataha, saha and pratyagachati. Here we have arthas in the arthakasha, here we have shabdas in the shabdakasha and these shabdas get transformed in the form of the audible speech expressing these meanings, expressing these meanings. And here there are five sentences which are interlinked. So we can say that this is a paragraph of five sentences, one unit a paragraph of five sentences. And so these five sentence meanings, they get transformed into the five sentences over here. These are the sentence meanings and these are the sentences. So five sentence meanings coming one after another, forming one unit, they get transformed in the Shabdakasha in the form of these five sentences and then the sentences get produced. Now in these it is important to note that the process of Sandhi happens over here in the Shabdakasha which is what is reflected in the actual audible speech. Now the speech thus produced is analyzed further in the form of its segments and then we arrive at the sound inventory which is the traditional sound inventory which looks like this. So first we have a e u ru lu a i o a u and these are separated from the rest by because of some reason. Then we have the five classes, five into five, twenty-five consonants arranged in the form of row and column and numbered accordingly and arranged accordingly. So k, k, g, g and ng, this is the first row and k in the first column, k in the second column, g in the third, g in the fourth 
and ng in the fifth column. Then we have the second row having ch, ch, j, j, and y, each one placed in the respective column. Then we have the third row with t, t, d, d, and n, each sound placed in the respective column. Then we have t, th, d, d, and n. Then we have p, p, b, b, and m. After these 25 consonants, we have another four, namely y, r, l, and v, and then the remaining four, sh, sh, s, and h. This is what is the traditional sound inventory. Let us take a quick look at the criteria used for classification of sounds in this particular manner. This is once again very crucial for us to understand the sandhi better because the sandhi is based on these classifications. The, so the features of these sounds are these Swaratah Kalata Sthanat Prayatnana Pradhanatah Swara Kala Sthana and Prayatna these are those criteria. So let us look at them one by one. The first one is Kala also known as Pramana indicating the length the length that is required in order to produce a particular sound that will distinguish that sound from the rest from the also the similar ones. Then there is place of articulation also known as sthana. Then you have effort of articulation also known as prayatna. And finally swara namely pitch or tone also known as swara. It is these four which are parts of the sounds that are produced and it is these features which, dis which distinguish one sound from the rest. Let us study them one by one. Let us first of all look at the length or the pramana, the kala required to produce a particular sound. Matra is generally regarded as the parameter describing the color, the amount of time required to produce certain sounds. Matra can be calculated using the modern technological tools and it comes to a few seconds, few milliseconds in addition as well. Now it is stated that half a matra is the length of a consonant also known as hull. Consonants cannot be produced without the support of the vowels. Individual consonants can be produced that too in isolation but the string of consonants cannot be produced beyond certain limit. Then we also note down the length of time required for certain other sounds. One or more than one matra is that particular time that is required for the production of some sounds. And these sounds are separated from the half a matra timed sounds, those were the hulls. Now these ones which require one or more than one matra, they are termed as vowels or Ach in technical terminology. So here you have now the two way classification between Ach or Swaras and Hal or Vyanjanas. A, E, U, Ru, Lu, A, I, O, O, they all require minimum one matra time for their production. And that is the reason why these are considered to be the swaras or the vowels. Whereas all these, 
they take half a matra time to get produced. And that is one of the reasons why they are separated. In fact, that is the main reason why these sounds are separated from the previous ones, the vowels. So all of them, they are called consonants. The other word used is hull. These are all the hulls. And we shall study why they are called hulls. And we shall study why these are called ach in the next lecture when we study the technique of forming the pratyahara, which is used by Panini, which is used in the Paninian grammar in order to describe sandhi very, very effectively. So these two groups, Swara and Vyanjana, they are clear cut available to us based on the time, based on the kala required for their production. Then we have the length or the pramana, which is also used to distinguish between the vowels. So vowels, they are further distinguished as rasva, dirgha and plutha based on the length of the vowels. We say that they should minimum have one matra length, but sometimes this can be also lengthened and then it can also be prolated. So the vowel which requires one matra for its production is termed as a short vowel or to use the Sanskrit term that vowel is termed as rasva. Then the vowel which requires two matras length is termed as long vowel or dirgha and the one which requires three matras is termed plutha vowel or in other words prolated. So rasva, dirgha and plutha these are the three varieties of the vowels. These are never the varieties of the features of the consonants. So a rasva swara, dirgha swara and plutha swara. You can never have a rasva consonant and dirgha consonant and plutha consonant. Not possible. This is how pramana plays an important role in further classifying the vowels. Then we have the place of articulation which is extremely important, also known as sthana in Paniniya Shiksha. And the, here are the eight places of articulation also described in the Paniniya Shiksha in the following verse. The verse says, Ashtau sthanani varnanam. There are eight places of articulation of the sounds. What are they? Uraha, Kanthaha, Shirastatha, Jivhamulam Chadantascha, Nasikoshthau Chatalucha. There are eight places of articulation. Uras or chest, Kantha, Shiras, Jivhamula, Nasika, Oshthau and Talu. Kantha is Vilam, Shiras is the Murdhan, Cerebrum, Jivhamula is the root of the tongue, Nasika is the nose, Oshthau is the lips and Talu is the palate. There are these eight places of articulation described in the Paniniya Shiksha which differentiate sounds from each other. So for example, points in the oral cavity where the air stream strikes and then the air stream is thrown out, these points are known as the sthanas. So for example, kantha is the place of articulation which is known as vilam. Place, this is the place of articulation of the vowel a and also all the consonants that come in the first row. Talu or palate is the place of articulation of e and all the consonants which come in the second row. Murdhan or the roof of the oral cavity is the place of articulation of the vowel ru and 
all the consonants in row 3. Danta tooth or teeth is the place of articulation of the vowel lu and all the consonants that come in the fourth row. Oshtau are or lips. They are the place of articulation of the vowel u and all the consonants mentioned in row 5. Jivha mula, the root of the tongue, is the place of articulation of the sounds which are known as jivha muliya. Nasika or nose is the place of articulation of all the sounds which are mentioned in column 5. And uras is considered to be the place of articulation of a special sound h as mentioned as described in Paniniya Shiksha. This is about the place of articulation, a very important feature of the sounds and it is, it is on the basis of this feature that sounds get distinguished and also it is on the basis of this feature that the close sounds are selected and are replaced and are placed in place of the substituent. So, sthana wise, here is the same sound inventory. So, here we have a and her having kantha as the place of articulation along with the ro, ro 1. Then we have e, y and sh with talu as the place of articulation and ro 2. Murdhan as the place of articulation of the vowel ru and the semi vowel r and then the third ro. Similarly, we have danta with lu as the vowel and l as the semi vowel produced from dantas and then the fourth row, tatha dadhana. And then finally, we have lips, oshtau, which act as the place of articulation of u and v and then the consonants in the fifth class per class. We have two special places of articulation with a combination of the two places kantha and talu and kantha and oshta and a and i they are produced from kantha talu, o and au they are produced from kantha oshtau. So, a, h, k, kh, g, gh, ng they are produced from kantha e, y, sh, ch, ch, j, j, y, they are produced from talu, r, r, and t, th, d, dh, n, they have the place of articulation murdhan, then lu, l, t, th, d, dh, n, they have dant as the place of articulation, u, v, p, p, b, b, m, they have oshtav as the place of articulation, a and i have kantha talu as the place of articulation and o and au have kantha oshtau as the place of articulation. This is the overall description of the sounds and it is important to remember this distinction and these features so that the substitute selection will become easier. Now if we look at the effort of articulation we note that the effort of articulation covers the quality of air stream namely the volume or whether it touches the windpipe or not and generates effect or not, whether it touches the vocal cord and generates effect or not. These are considered as the efforts of articulation. Generally there are two types of efforts Abhyantara and Bahya. Abhyantara is the one that is internal inside the oral cavity 
and bile is out of oral cavity in windpipe etc the abhyantara prayatna is of these four types sprashta which means contact touch of the tongue with the place of articulation all one to five rows plus column 1 and column 5 all of them they are called sprishtas then we have ishat sprishta slight contact slight touch of the tongue with the place of articulation and this is y v r and l then we have vivruta openness of the oral aperture all the vowels minus a and sh sh s h they have vibruta as the abhyantara prayatna and finally samvruta which is the abhyantara prayatna of a samvruta is closed and this is the abhyantara prayatna of a so this is how we can describe the abhyantara prayatna in the traditional sound inventory where all the vowels except a uh, they are called vibruta as abhyantara prayatna a uh, has got samvruta as its abhyantara prayatna all these from row 1 to 5 and columns 1 to 5 these 25 sounds they have the abhyantara prayatna sprishta yara lava they have the abhyantara prayatna ishat sprishta and shashas they also have the abhyantara prayatna vibruta then we talk of the bahya prayatna and here are the bahya prayatnas for you shwasa which is breath and this is the bahya prayatna of column 1 and 2 plus sh sh and s nad resonance this is the bahya prayatna of columns 3 4 and 5 and h aghosha voiceless this is the bahya prayatna of columns 1 and 2 and sh sh s ghosha is the bahya prayatna of columns 3 4 and 5 and h vivara openness is the bahya prayatna of columns 1 and 2 and sh sh s and samvara is the or the closure is the bahya prayatna of columns 3 4 5 and h so each sound has multiple bahya prayatnas similarly there is another type of bahya prayatna called alpa prana and maha prana less aspirate or, or more aspirate so columns 1 3 and 5 they are called less aspirate whereas columns 2 and 4 and sh sh s h these are called more aspirate or maha prana so now when sandhi happens and when a particular substitute comes in place of a particular substituent the selection of the proper substitute is made on the basis of all these features the abhyantara prayatna primarily and then also sometimes bahya prayatna now we can place the bahya prayatna in this particular sound in this particular manner in the traditional sound inventory so shwasa aghosha vivara these are the bahya prayatnas of column 1 column 3 and also column 5 nad aghosha samvara these are the bahya prayatnas of column 2 and column 4 along with them they also are maha prana column 2 and 4 they are maha prana and column 1 3 and 5 they are called alpa prana similarly sh sh and s they are called shwasa aghosha vivara and maha pranas and h is called nad ghosha samvada and maha prana bahya prayatnas this is how bahya prayatnas get described and also the accent 
the tone or the pitch. There are three accents. These are the features of vowels. And they are udat, acute, anudat, grave, and swarit, circumflex. And remember, these are the features only of the vowels. There are certain features that vowels do not have, and there are certain features that vowel do have, and some features which the consonants do not have, and there are some other features which only they have. To summarize, we studied in this lecture the features of sounds produced by the process of speech production as described in the Paninia Shiksha. These features serve as parameters for selection of a substitute in place of a substituent. This information serves as the base for Sandhi. Paninian grammar rearranges these sounds to form technical terms to be used in the description of Sandhi and these terms are called Pratyaharas and it is these that we shall study in the next lecture. Thank you very much.